Dr. Peter McGaw. I have the pleasure of being one of the co-founders of Menorum Gold. I remain a director and I'm involved with our on-site team led by Steve Maynard in the Alamos District in Sonora, Mexico. Menorum set out from the onset to look for district scale, high-grade discoveries. So we weren't interested in finding small mines, making small discoveries. We were interested in basically opening up big time, big scale exploration opportunity. So hole seven, which is the first hole ever put into this area west of the upthrown block into the, into the Europa vein, hit eight meters, approximately true thickness as far as we can tell. We think we hit it almost at a right angle of better than 1,750 grams silver. That's almost 60 troy ounces per ton. That's one of the more important intercepts that's been made in the silver space in a number of years. We know from surface mapping that there's at least one and a half kilometers of strike length of the Europa vein on the surface, which is now completely open for exploration. We cut what's called the Nueva Europa vein, which is halfway to the Europa vein from the historic workings, and we got almost two meters of 450 grams silver there. When we started this program, we were talking about being happy cutting 20 centimeters of 200 grams. So we've more than blown that away in two structures, plus there's at least three blind stringers that we cut with mineralization in them in between all of those. Add to that the fact that the Europa vein is not the last vein to the west of the historic part of the district, and we have similar stringers and prospected veins on the east side, and we've taken what was a historically important, 150 million ounces of silver production is a significant district. That all came from two veins. Very few epithermal vein systems only have two veins. Most of them have swarms of multiple veins, five, six, seven, eight. So we've identified at least that many structures on the surface with quartz veining in them, and I would argue that we've now opened all of those for potential discovery. Now, not all of them are going to turn out to be as well mineralized as what we've hit in hole seven, but we also don't have any belief that hole seven is necessarily the best vein on the property. So we've got a lot of work to do, but we've now got very serious support, proof of concept, and justification to move forward. The Alamos district where we're working now has almost 450 years of production history, mostly prior to 1910, but the Spaniards found veins sticking out of the ground there and they found very high grade silver mineralization which they followed from the surface to about 500 meters. They did all of that within a central upthrown block and they paid Although people prospected the narrow little veins and wispy quartz stringers that you can find on both sides of that upthrown block, nobody ever drilled them and none of the old workings get down more than a few meters on these things. Team recognized through mapping that there's what we call piano key style faulting. And if you think about starting with a plane like this, which is like your fingers on the set of piano keys, and some of the keys are depressed and some of the keys are left the same way and others are depressed a little more and some are left like this. You have some blocks that are higher, some blocks that are lower. The block with the historic mineralization was an upthrown block. So erosion had gotten far enough down to expose the fat part of the vein. What we recognized was in the depressed blocks next door, we were looking at a much higher expression of the system. So above where the vein is big and fat, the vein gets wispy and turns into a sort of series of stringers. And so we put the structural model together with what we know about how epithermal veins work. And we said, the real potential in this district is not in the historically explored and known part, but in the flanking, completely unexplored, although heavily prospected areas. 